Everyone, this is FaZe and welcome to my channel. A couple years ago, I did a video about how I really wanted an e-reader with a color display, especially from a company with a strong ecosystem like Amazon or Kobo. And finally, Kobo is coming out with not one, but two color e-readers, the Kobo Libra Color and Kobo Clara Color. Last week, I did a full unboxing video of both the e-readers, which you can click the link above or in the description below to check that video out. And as promised, I'm here with my full review of the Copa Libra color and my review of the Copa Clara color will drop in a few days, so stay tuned for that. But first, let's talk about design. Now, for those who have used the previous Copa Libra e-readers, you might be a little disappointed that the design has not changed much over the Libra 2. It is pretty much the same design since 2019, but I don't actually mind that at all. The design is good and after all, if it ain't broke, why fix it, right? It's hands down one of the most ergonomic designs that I've used in an e-reader. The Cobra Libra in general was designed for single hand usage with the edge of the thicker bezel still slightly curved upward with two page turn binds perfectly placed to provide a comfortable grip. I really dig this textured back as well. And it adds a nice grip, and the power switch on the rear is still the same round concave. Also brought from the Libra 2 is the round white indicator light that glows when you start charging it or when you turn it on. The entire device is encased in plastic, which is now made from 80% recycled materials, including ocean bound plastics. What I find quite impressive is that Kobo has managed to keep the weight of the device down despite using a larger battery in the Libra color. It weighs just a hair under 200 grams without a case, which is surprisingly lighter than the Libra 2 that weighs at 215 grams. The Libra color looks pretty much identical to the Libra 2, yet it's lighter and that is quite noticeable the moment you pick it up. Also for those who don't like displays in flush with the bezel, you'll really appreciate this sunken in display which I personally like because I feel like sunken in displays always remove a little more glare and also unwanted fingerprints. Now aside from the sunken in display, I also quite enjoy the page turn buttons because they're quite nice and clicky and overall, it's the device is quite comfortable to hold and use in one hand. Now a lot of you were asking if there's a micro SD card slot and the answer is no. Now many of my subscribers also asked me if the magnet is strong for the stylus on this all new Kobo Libra and I'm happy to say that the answer is yes. So for those who like note taking and drawing, Kobo has made the magnetic edge quite strong so your stylus will stay nice and secure. And to be honest, if you use a case and you don't even have to worry about that at all. Also, it's waterproof for up to an hour and up to two meters of water. But at the end of the day, what's important for an e-reader is if it's nice and comfortable to hold during reading sessions, which it definitely is, and the display, which we will discuss now because that is the major attraction of this new Kobo. Perhaps the most exciting feature of this new Kobo Libra is a seven inch Kaleido 3 screen that supports over 4,000 views and is currently the best color e-paper display being used on consumer devices. Now, when I did the unboxing video, a lot of people were asking about the quality of the display. Well, I must say that the text and images on this Libra color are quite sharp and the colors are fairly accurate. However, I must caution you. While this screen tech can display over 4,000 colors, the colors don't appear as saturated as they would look on a phone, laptop, or tablet. They're a little washed out in comparison, and that's the limitation of just e-paper screen technology in general. And I also want to add that this is not a bad thing. The color accuracy and saturation that we are so used to seeing on our smartphones and computers is not what we should be expecting in the first place. These are not LCD displays. When reading on this for long periods of time with any e-ink display, it's easy on the eye. I would compare reading on this to like a newspaper with colorful images. Some might call it washed out, but for ink on paper that is meant for reading and should be easy on the eye and gives weeks of battery life, this is quite amazing. You get 150 pixels per inch when reading in color and 300 pixels per inch when reading in black and white, which is standard for most monochrome ebook e-readers. As with all premium Kobo e-readers, the Libra color screen is also lit up with Comfort Light Pro, which automatically changes the light hue from cool to warmer tones as the day progresses. This reduces the amount of blue light hitting your eye closer to bedtime. Overall, the reading experience is nice, and those who like reading graphic novels manga, comic books, or anything with color, 
you're really going to enjoy reading on this Kobo Libra. However, like with any new technology, it will improve over time. Pixels per inch will go up, the color saturation will be better as the years progress. However, I still want to say that an e-ink color display is major innovation and Kobo has done a fantastic job with the execution of it on their device. I do not feel like the screen is dim or dull. The lighting on this e-reader is top notch and I can almost promise that reading on this, it's pure joy. Now let's talk about the user interface. Look, I've primarily always been an Amazon fanboy, always reading on Kindles, but after using this Kobo for a while, I must say I quite enjoy it and don't miss my Kindle at all. The UI is quite intuitive and very easy to use. And to be honest, the UI for almost all e-readers nowadays are nearly identical. However, there is one major difference to the interface. Now the Libra is also a note-taking device. So there is a My Notebooks tab right in the center of the navigation bar at the bottom. The first ever note-taking e-reader I ever used was the Kindle Scribe. The writing experience on there was pretty good, but I always wished there was a smaller version of it. Now that I was writing on a 7-inch screen, I enjoyed it, but then I almost started missing the bigger screen of the Scribe because the smaller screen makes it feel a little more congested. But when you get used to it, it feels a lot more comfortable. Now the other change to the interface is how Kobo is really taking advantage of the color display. And I don't mean just the book covers that are displayed on the home screen or the content displayed in the books themselves. You see, every time you select the tab from the navigation bar, it changes color from black to brown. Also, when you're downloading books, the status bar is also the same color to match the application. This is a very nice touch. Also, this Kobo supports a ton of popular file formats, and there are a total of 10 document file types that Kobo supports by default and this includes text and comic formats. There are also four image files that are supported, and the only audio file support though is for Kobo's own audiobooks that you can download from the Kobo store or via subscription to Kobo Plus. So you can't import your own audio, unfortunately. What I really like, however, is that you can sign into Dropbox or Google Drive to help transfer books. It's very easy to use these cloud services, and it's also quite seamless to transfer notes and notebooks. You can even access them through the Kobo app on your phone. Also, you do get dark mode, but I'm not sure if I like the implementation here because it only inverts the text colors. For example, the home screen will still be displayed on a white background, as will all your notebooks. So it's only the text within ebooks that can have white text on a black background. Aside from that, you also have amber LEDs that allow you to change the white light view to warmer tones to help you reduce the blue light. This makes a huge difference for reading at night. Now for all those who worry that color e-readers seem dim, then let me just say that I am very impressed at how bright the Libra color can get. You will not be disappointed with the brightness levels. That I can guarantee. You can easily adjust the light, the brightness, and temperature by tapping on the top of the screen to bring up the quick controls. Like the previous Libra 2 and the newer models, you can set the light temperature to change automatically at a specific time in the evening or night, and of course, you can change the brightness just by the toggles. Now let's go over performance. This is what I hate to talk about with e-readers because to be honest, performance on e-readers doesn't matter too much. The goal is to simply flip through pages of the books that you're reading. That's it. So if you have used a Kobo or a Kindle before, I will say that this is slightly faster with those page flips because Kobo has doubled the CPU going from one gigahertz to two gigahertz. And after two weeks with a new Libra color, there's nothing to complain about. Everything runs smoothly, even when it comes to writing and drawing, it all works flawlessly. Lastly, let's go over battery life. All I can say is that it's quite good. Kobo has upgraded the battery capacity in the Libra Color to 2,050 milliamp hours compared to 1,500 in the Libra 2. However, I was rigorously testing this Kobo for this review. Don't forget that. I was going through all the new features and really testing its limits. I started using the device straight out of the box at 80% battery life, and I was around 32% after two weeks. I'd say that's pretty good, considering that I was writing, reading colorful graphic-heavy novels, and listening to audiobooks via Bluetooth. I had Wi-Fi on all the time, and the screen was set at 40% brightness in a refresh set to every five pages. It's also important to note that a page refresh occurs more frequently when writing and every erase triggers another refresh as well. So the bigger battery capacity in this new Kobo is definitely working in its favor. 
In conclusion, the Kobo Libra Color is a fantastic e-reader. The color screen, the performance, the battery life, and the writing capabilities are all excellent. This premium 7-inch e-reader offers really good value at just $220. Yes, you'll need to purchase this $70 Kobo Stylus 2 separately if you're into note-taking or drawing, but I still think the whole package is a great deal. And at the end of the day, I wanna know your thoughts and questions regarding this all new Kobo Libra color. So be sure to leave them down in the comment section below. Also stay tuned to my full review of the Kobo Clara color as well. That should be dropping any day now. And of course, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, be sure to subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time.